My name is Burton Richter. I'm a former director of the SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory and may be one of the last, if not the last, of the uh, generation that brought colliding beams into existence. Uh, now we're looking at what the next big machine is going to be. And uh, the electron-positron collider community got together, oh, more than 10 years ago, 15 years ago, to bring in Asia, Europe, and the U.S. into the development of the technology. Uh, technology has been developed. It's ready for the uh, next big machine. And the question is, what's the next big machine and what's the competition? So LHC is back on the air. LHC is nearly doubling its energy. We expect all sorts of good things to come out of the LHC. But one thing that's come out already is the Higgs boson. But is it the Higgs everybody thinks it is? Uh, that's a funny question because it's light, it's in the right region and all the rest of it. But uh, there are variants that you can think of that don't uh, do exactly the same thing. And one of the ways you tell if it's the right one is you look at the branching fractions of the Higgs and see if they agree with what the standard model tells you. That is much, much easier, infinitely easier on an E plus E minus machine than on a proton machine. Uh, the reason is simple. Electrons, positrons are both elementary. Protons are composite. And in electron-positron collisions at high energy, there's kind of uh, what I call a democracy of production. All cross-sections are within an order of magnitude or so about the same. In the proton colliders, uh, the experimenters have to cope with backgrounds that are 10 to the 9th to 10 to the 10th times the interesting cross-section. It is a very difficult job, and it has required tremendous ingenuity in detector design and in trigger design to make the system work. Clearly, they've made it work because they have found the Higgs. But precision measure of branching fractions requires that you get a lot of them and that the system be clean, and that's much easier in E plus, E minus. When you're looking for the long-term future, there's another thing that you should think about, too. Uh, protons are composite, and that says that the collisions that produce the things you're interested in are collisions of uh, pieces of the proton, not the proton, and those pieces share the energy. And so if you build a machine like uh, LHC, 14 TeV, the chances of you're actually getting a collision where you get 14 TeV into the uh, uh, particles that you're interested in is essentially zero. Uh, if you look at it in detail, if you want the same kind of physics, uh, then uh, you need an E plus E minus machine with an energy of 10% to 20% of what you get with the protons. Uh, so all of you think about this, look to the future. Uh, that future is going, we hope, to include new accelerators. It's only going to include new accelerators if we've got a good story on the physics that we're going to get and if we do something to control the cost. The electron colliders are an important route. They haven't uh, gotten the attention that they deserve. And I want to close with something that I remember from when I was much younger. I was a science fiction fan. and. Uh, I remember a story. I don't remember who wrote it. I don't remember the title, but I remember the first page because the first page said, high energy physics and ground-based astronomy are no longer done because their facilities have become too expensive. Uh, that was before the invention of colliding beams. 
Uh, it's only the existence of colliding beams that has made it possible to build the colliders at energies that we've got today. What are we going to do for an encore? Uh, while you're thinking about the next machine, think about your investment in advanced accelerator R&D. Uh, good luck to all.